Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And uh, one of the things that we were actually wondering a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the future of Windows 10 was its, um, you know, servicing um, pipeline, if you want. How will Windows 10 be um, available in the future? As right now, its support phase is 18 months for home and for pro versions. Of course, enterprise have 30 months. So we didn't really know what's gonna happen next. And um, now with, of course, a little more of a clear uh, path for the future, one of the things that is interesting is to note that they're keeping 18 month cycle in Windows 10. So, even though now we're moving to a annual update, the cycle, the time that your Windows version expires is still keeping at 18 months. So this is kind of interesting um, with the fact that they're moving to an annual release. I would have thought that maybe they would have moved that to 24 months, but obviously Microsoft is not changing that. So, for example, if you're on version 2004, your end of support is coming up next month. That's going to be 18 months. If you're on 20H2, the uh, October and November uh, 2020 update, you are going to be supported until sometime uh, like April uh, or May of 2022. That's your 18-month cycle. If you're on 21H1, like I am here on this machine, you're up actually 18 months will expire uh, in at the second half in the end of 2022. And if you are one of those that I've moved on to 21H2, well, that means that you will be supported until the um, month of May-ish 2023. Now, what's interesting here is that 18-month cycle means that you're almost you will almost have to have you know the update once a year. So this changes the way things are. Before you could wait and even jump over versions. For example, you might be right now 20H2, jump over 21H1 and go directly to 21H2 because that's possible. With the new yearly cycle, you won't be able to do that. You are now going to have each version, and they're giving you kind of a six months of, you know, I'm thinking about it before you are going to have to go there. So technically, it's you have to have each version every year, but with a six months buffer zone of, I'm going to wait six months before I decide to get it or not but it's still going to be once a year. You're going to have to get it at some point. So that changes the cycle of Windows 10 updates. And that means you're not jumping over any versions anymore in the future. And last but not least, I'm going to just state it again. Microsoft says that one or even several versions of Windows 10 are going to go until the end of support in October of 20. 25. So October 14, 2025 is the end of Windows 10. As seen from Microsoft <coughs> right now as they are releasing 21H2. Once again, a lot of people are asking is, you know, is there going to be extensions? Um, you know, if not enough people are going to Windows 11, is there going to be some, you know, um, extensions so that we can go to 2026 or 2027? Because maybe I won't have a PC that's compatible. Uh, for now, Microsoft is keeping, you know, it's and like I said in a video last week, it's still very early to decide that. And only one version of Windows ever had an extension for regular, uh, you know, people. Most of the other versions, they just had the end of support, then they had, you know, the paid support for enterprise. So, uh, but you, we know, and it's still, you know, Microsoft just said it again today. We know that October 2025 is where it ends. 
Uh, for those that think it ends soon in six months or a year, or Microsoft going to change its mind? They're still stating the same date of October twenty-fourth, October fourteenth, sorry, twenty twenty-five. So, uh, kind of a f yearly forced update with a buffer zone of six months that you can test. That, that's a change. No more jumping over versions of Windows, uh, starting with twenty-one H two. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.